In this video, I'll give you a brief walkthrough of how to burn DVDs using Toast 20. A few months ago, I created a video that showed you how to take movie files from your Mac and burn them to blank DVDs using a free app called Burn. I'll drop a link in the description to that video if you'd like to check it out. Now, I mentioned Toast back then, but I didn't recommend it because I wasn't sure if it would work with the latest version of Mac OS. Mac OS Ventura. And so I tested that a few weeks later, and now I'm ready to give you that walkthrough. The version of Toast that I'm using is called Toast Titanium. There are two versions out there. There's Toast Titanium and there's Toast Pro. Toast Pro is about $50 more than Titanium, and it includes an additional feature set above and beyond what you get with Toast Titanium. Now for me, Titanium is more than everything I need. I'll drop a link in the description so you can check out the differences between Titanium and Pro and decide for yourself. You should probably also know there isn't a free trial. I wish there were, but before you make your purchase, you can be completely informed on which version is which. And if necessary, I think you can get a refund if you decide that Toast isn't the app for you. For me, I've been using Toast for years and years, and so I'm happy that there's a new version and that it's compatible with Mac OS Ventura. So let's go ahead and jump in so I can show you how this works. I've launched the Toast app and I'm on the home screen here. Now you'll notice the home screen is a collection of six different icons with little push pins next to them. It turns out there are seven sections in this app. The first is home and on each of the other sections like burn or copy, there's a set of other features, many of them in fact, more than I thought. So if I go here to burn and I decide, you know, there's another feature I'm gonna use a lot, I can pin it to the home page. So down here I could choose HD on DVD. I can click the push pin and now when I go back to home, I'll see that I've got Burn HD on DVD. Now what's cool about the home screen is I can also drag these icons around to rearrange them to the order that I need. Or if I decide that something is no longer necessary, or maybe it's a feature I'm not gonna use that often on the home screen, I don't want it there. I can click the little push pin to remove it from the home screen. So that's the home screen in the Toast 20 app. I'm gonna show you briefly some of the other options that are available in the other sections of this app. So if we go to burn, you'll see there's a bunch of ways to burn videos, burn data, burn audio, burn photos. If we go to copy, you can see there's ways to copy CDs, DVDs, Blu-rays, try to recover files, a few ripping DVDs. There's also a conversion option which allows you to take videos and photos and convert them for output on other devices or if you're doing audio to convert the audio to other formats. Capture lets you capture the screen which is kind of what I'm doing right now. I'm recording the screen. I'm not using Toast for that. I'm using a different app called ScreenFlow but it's the same idea. You can record your screen or you can record audio using this feature and then you've got some editing options for editing video. You've got the ability to also create secure or encrypted disks. If you'd like me to talk about some of the other sections in an upcoming video, just drop a comment and let me know. So on the home screen, I'm gonna click burn. Here I see there are three columns. On the left, a column of all of the themes. There are 20 themes in all. I can scroll down this list. I'll show you how to use that in a second. In the center is the DVD menu, which allows me to build out a structure for menus, sub menus, and which videos will appear on which pages. And then on the right, I have output settings that allows me to control the name of the disc, whether or not I have a menu. I can choose to remove a menu if I don't want one. And then what format I'm burning to. In a moment, I'm gonna show you how to use the built-in themes, but before we do that, I wanna show you that you can customize and create your own. So here in the themes column, we're gonna click this plus button, which allows us to design a new theme. The first button here lets us pick if we would like to use an existing theme to base our custom one on, which we can do, but just for simplicity, I'm gonna leave it on blank, and I'm gonna show you that we can pick the number of rows, one row, three columns, we can pick two rows, three columns, we can do two rows, two columns, and then here we can choose whether we want title only for each of these elements or whether we want one preview and then a bunch of titles or if we want one preview for each title which is what the default was. Next I get to choose a preset, some kind of a preset outline for the different buttons here, the clickable items, I can choose color. And then here, this allows me to choose the design for the buttons that are available on the menu. So if I go here to preset style, I can see I'm on default. I could change it to aquarium and you can see these buttons change. So you have some options here. I'm gonna go back to the default just so that it's clear when we go look at the templates that our custom one is different from the others that are available. Here we can hit the plus for A to choose to add new text in addition to the text that automatically shows up when we select our videos, which we'll do later. We can insert additional media that we'd like to show 
show on our menu screen. We can also choose to edit the background and to select custom music to play when people are viewing this section of our menu template. Now I've customized it the way I want. Notice there's no option to add one of my movies, like my slideshow video or whatever, to this template because we're creating the template which will become available when we select our theme in a moment. Instead, what we're gonna do is we're gonna hit next. It's going to offer us same options for customizing the chapter menu, the chapters that'll show up for each of our videos. I'm gonna leave this as it is and click export. Now the first thing it wants to ask me is would I like to save this project file? to remember my customization so that in the future, if I wanna tweak it further, I can start by loading up the custom settings that I've chosen. I'm gonna choose no this time. And then it's gonna ask me if I'd like to save the theme. So this actually will save a toast file that remembers this theme layout and it'll insert it side by side with all of the other themes that are available in the app. Now, you may not wanna save it to your desktop. You might wanna save it to documents or a special folder. I'm gonna save it to desktop just for simplicity and I'll call it the Hey Ivan theme and we'll hit save and now we're done. And when we go back to the regular Toast user interface, you'll see all of these themes here. And at the very top, you'll see my Hey Ivan theme that I've just added. Let's take a look at how to use these themes. We'll start by going into the middle, the second column here, so you can see what's going on. We've got three little boxes. The first box is drop an intro video. If I had a video that wasn't part of my main presentation, like maybe the FBI warning, or some other kind of information that I'd like to present to people when they insert the disc in their DVD players, I could drag and drop that video and put it right here. I don't wanna do that here, so instead what I'm gonna do is select this image, and then in the upper right, there's a little red circle. I'll click that, and that clears it out. What I'd like to do now is choose the root menu. So no intro video for me, instead a root menu. Now, what template is this using? If I click the little pencil down here, I can zoom into that and see this looks like a movie strip, which kinda of looks like what's down here. Let me scroll down a little bit. I I think this is Premiere, it is. You can see that that's the Premiere template. And let me click the little pencil to go back into the menu view. If I wanna use a different theme, I can select a different one. I can either hit this little plus to apply it to the selected item. I can hit this extra plus, which will select all of the menus in my project and apply the same theme. Or I can just drag the theme and drop it on the specific menu item that I'd like to adjust. So I actually like Premiere, so I'm gonna drag it and drop it right there. And now I can put a menu or a video. Now, the important thing here is you can stack more than one menu. You can also stack more than one video. However, the order that you input them is the order they'll appear from top to bottom on your menu screens. So the first thing I'm gonna do is take my vacation video and drop it right there. Great, below the vacation video, what I'd like to do is add another menu. So I'm gonna go here to Premiere, I'm gonna choose this one with the little chapter menus and drop it here. How can I take a look at what I've done so far? Click back here on the main menu and then hit the little pencil down here to zoom in. That lets you see it. And you can see here vacation slideshow, which was the video that I dropped, and then the sub menu, which is also what I dropped. I'm gonna hit the pencil here and you can see I've got some options. This is called root menu, I might wanna call this vacations, and then this one is called sub menu, and I might wanna call this other vacations. That looks good. So we'll select here, we'll hit the little play, which allows us to get a preview of what this looks like. So you can see how this looks. You can even use this digital remote control or click on the other items to peruse them. Right now, this is my menu, it's two things. It's a main page, which links to my vacation video, and a sub menu that links to nothing right now. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna drop my other vacations into this list in alphabetical order. First, I'm gonna drop the Hawaii video. Notice that these items here are hanging off of the sub menu. If I drop something here, this will hang off of the main menu. Now let's drop New York right here next to that, and then let's drop Washington DC third. If for some reason I wanted to rearrange these items, there's no way that I've found to rearrange them by dragging, but what you can do is position on them, hit the little red X to drop them out, and then drag another item in the bottom. It always inserts the last thing that you dropped as the lowest item in the list. So if you wanted to completely rearrange this list, you'd have to remove them all and then add them back again in the order you wanted them to appear. Down here at the bottom, you can see this is the space that's used on the DVD disc. I'm planning to use a standard DVD disc, which is just over four gigs of total storage right here. If we'd like to customize our menu, let's click here on the submenu. Let's click the pencil. Other vacations, Hawaii, 
Hawaii, New York, DC. I could click in here and make some additional changes, but this is sufficient. Now you'll notice that the theme, when I preview it, it has music already, but if I had other music in mind that I'd like to play, I could click here to add music and then browse my computer to find other music tracks that I'd like to use to have it play in the background. Here, I can also change the background image. However, what I found is that the built-in themes have an animated background that loops when you're perusing the menu. If you replace the background, you can only add photos. So this will allow you to choose a photo from your computer if you'd like to do that. I don't, so I think I'm okay here. And then let's take a look at this one here, which lets us see the template in motion. So this is the video, kind of looping video that I was talking about. And there you go. If you have any questions, drop them in the comments. So the last section here, the last column, oh, before I even go into the last column, let me just tell you, we've added our own custom template at the top here. If we'd like to remove our custom template, we can select it. And down here at the bottom, we can hit this little trash can, which removes any custom template that we've created. You'll notice when you select a built-in template, the trash can is grayed out. You can't remove built-in templates, but if you create some of your own, you can remove them later on. All right, the last thing we'd like to look at is this last column here, which allows us to remove the menu if we decide we don't want a menu. And then this becomes much more of like a dragging and dropping files that you'd like to play one after the other on your disc. Uh, I'm gonna put back our menu because I like what we've built. I'm gonna give our DVD a title. I'm gonna call this Vacations. And then I'll choose my format. Again, it's either DVD, which is a standard DVD, AVCHD, which allows you to do higher definition videos on a DVD, and then BDMV, which is Blu-ray disc. So we're gonna leave it on DVD because that's the kind of burner I have. The destination, I only have one DVD drive connected to my device, so that's the one that's showing here. I could choose to save it to a disc image, which is a file that acts like a DVD that you can mount and maybe store that on somewhere else. We're not gonna get into any of that right now. We're gonna keep it simple and just go to the built-in DVD. And then when we're done with the burn, what do we wanna do? Leave Toast open return to the home screen of the app, start a new project, close toast. I tend to leave it on do nothing. And when we're ready to begin our burn, we click burn and then we wait. So that has been a brief walkthrough of Toast Titanium, how to burn DVDs along with a tour of the rest of the app. Thank you guys for watching. If you have any questions, drop them in the comments and I'll see you in the next one.